Episode 397 of Shakespeare. We're still working on Henry V. Today we get to hear from the Duke of Exeter primarily and also a little bit from King France, the King Charles VI of France. This will be the king. This will be Exeter. Just, he's got one line in between two monologues, so we're just gonna squish them together. So anyway, uh, this scene is all about whether, is all about France's perspective on this whole thing and whether or not they, they actually feel threatened by England. And the king is like, yes, we should be prepared for England because they have beaten us in the past. And the Dauphin is like, oh, they're stupid little flies that don't know what they're doing. So let's not bother with them. And even the French constable is like, no, actually we should bother with them. And the Dauphin being ever the, the dude bro that he is, is like, yeah, no, no, we're fine. We don't have to worry about it. So then they call in the ambassadors the ambassador from England who has come to see them, who happens to be the Duke of Exeter, and the King of France says, you come from the King of England, right? And Exeter replies, from him. And thus he greets your majesty. He wills you in the name of God Almighty that you divest yourself and lay apart the bor borrowed glories that by gift of heaven, by law of nature and of nations, longs to him and to his heirs, namely the crown and all wide-stretched honors that pertain by custom and the ordinance of the times unto the crown of France. That you may know, tis no sinister nor no awkward claim picked from the wormholes of long-vanished days, nor from the dust of old oblivion raked, he sends you this most memorable line, in every branch truly demonstrative, willing you overlook this pedigree, and when you find him evenly derived from his most famed of famous ancestors, Edward III, he bids you then resign your crown and the kingdom, indirectly held from him, the native and true challenger. Or what else follows? Bloody constraint. For if you hide the crown, even in your hearts, there will he rake for it. Therefore, in fierce temp fiercest, therefore, in fierce tempest, is he coming. In thunder and in earthquake, like a Jove that if requiring fail, he will compel, and bids you, in the bowels of the Lord, deliver up the crown, and to take mercy on the poor souls for whom this hungry war opens his vasty jaws, and on your head, turning the widow's tears, the orphan's cries, the dead man's blood, the privy maiden's groans for husbands, fathers, and betrothed lover lovers that shall be swallowed in this controversy. This is his claim, his threatening, and my message. Unless the Dauphin be in presence here, to whom I express, to whom expressly I bring greeting to. That's a weird sentence that starts with two and ends with two. That's not grammatically fun. But anyway, um, yeah, Exeter comes in to say, give up the crown or we will wipe you off the face of the earth. Promise. And um, at the very end, he's like, you know, that's all I really have to say about the whole thing. Unless the Dauphin is here and the Dauphin is like, um, that would be me. To which Exeter replies, You are a stupid, worthless piece of garbage. So says the king. You can take your tennis balls and put them you know where, says the king. And the Dauphin is like, meh, pff, whatever. Um, and the king is actually kind of sort of struck by this. And he's like, you know, Dauphin, shut up, because we need to pay attention to this. And we will we'll give you an answer tomorrow. We'll let you know how we respond tomorrow. So speaking of tomorrow, tomorrow we get to hear the prologue from Act 3, reminding us that this is actually a Greek tragedy that Shakespeare wrote, um, and skipping ahead because watching the king, I think, no, well, I'd have to look into which order Shakespeare wrote the plays in, but Henry the Fourth, Part 2 was so back and forth of, we want to fight you for these reasons. They want to fight us for these reasons. Well, we don't want to fight them for these reasons. Blah, blah, blah. They don't want to fight you. Maybe Shakespeare was trying to avoid that whole thing again by like fast forwarding and giving us tomorrow's prologue. Something, I don't know. We'll find out what the prologue has to say tomorrow and we'll find out if they're actually gonna to go to war over the throne of France. We'll see you then. Yeah.